So let's take a look at the next problem we're going to be working on. So this problem says, well, it says solve the problem. And it says if f of x is equal to 3x minus b over x minus a, and it tells us that f of 3 is equal to 0, and f of negative 6 is undefined. What are the values of a and b? Okay, so taking a look at this function here. So we have f of x is equal to 3x minus b over x minus a. And we, as the problem is uh, here, we have three unknowns in this problem. We don't know what x is, we don't know what b is, and we don't know what a is. So that's a little bit too many unknowns. And it wants us to find the value of a and b. So we need to figure out how can we break down this problem how can we figure out some of these missing pieces? So one of the first things it tells us is that f of 3 is equal to 0. So that means if I plug in 3 for x, I'm going to get 0 for y. All right? So that means I can plug in a 3 here for these x's. And that means that f of x, which is equal to y, so this would be 0 here. That would still give us b and a that we wouldn't know. Okay. The next thing it tells us is that f of negative 6 is undefined. So we need to think about what that means. So if f of negative 6 is undefined, and taking a look at this function, this function is in fraction form. It is a rational expression. Um, a fraction is undefined when the denominator equals 0. So what this tells us, the fact that it tells us that f of negative 6 is undefined, that means that when we plug in negative 6 in for x, that means our denominator is going to equal 0. So that's exactly what I'm going to do first for this problem. I'm going to plug in negative 6 for x. All right, so our denominator is x minus a. Okay, I'm going to plug in negative 6 for x. And it says that when we do this, the denominator is equal to 0. So that tells me that negative 6 minus a is going to equal 0. That's what being undefined means. So I'm going to be able to solve this little equation here and solve it for a, and then use my other piece of information over here to hopefully find b. So let's first find a. In order to solve for a, we need to add that 6 to both sides. Negative 6 plus 6 cancels, giving us negative a is equal to 6. And dividing out the negative on both sides, we get that a is equal to negative 6. So there's one of our pieces of missing information. Now we need to figure out what b is. So the other piece of information they told us is that f of 3 is equal to 0. So that means when we plug in 3 in for x, we get 0 for y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our function, I'm going to plug in 3 for x, I'm going to plug in 0 for y, and I'm now going to plug in negative 6 in for a and see if we can find b here. So f of x, which is equal to y, is going to be 0. So that's going to equal to 3 times x, but we're plugging in a 3 for x. We are solving for b, so that's going to be over th x is equal to 3 minus a, which is negative 6. Okay. So since b is the only variable here, we should be able to solve this. So let's do a little bit of cleanup first. In our numerator, we have 3 times 3, which is 9. So we have 9 minus b over, in our denominator, we have that double negative rule. This minus this negative turns into plus a positive. So that gives us 3 plus 6 in our denominator, which is 9. Solving this for b, we need to get rid of the denominator. So in order to get rid of the denominator, we multiply both sides of the equation by it. So we're going to multiply both sides by 9. On the left, 9 times 0 is equal to 0. On the right-hand side, the 9 in the denominator cancels with the 9 we just multiplied by, giving us 9 minus b. And since we're solving for b, well, let's go ahead and just add b to both sides. It'll cancel it on the right-hand side, giving us that b is equal to 9. So now we know that a is equal to negative 6, 
B is equal to a positive 9. And that wraps up the problem for us. That's it for this video.